actually failure is positive in the world of science, engineering, and design. It actually teaches you what doesn't work with my 12 crazy spout shapes. And if, if you could see them, you might find them on the internet. If you see these spout shapes, people will laugh at you. But they actually taught me what was really not going to work. And from that failure, from those mistakes, I went on to develop that, um, the idea. And lateral thinking. Does anyone here know about lateral thinking or even understand what it means? Again, it's another word. I don't know if it's used in schools a lot or... Pardon? Well, lateral thinking, just to put it into simplistic terms, is the ability to see things um, unusually. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that now. So just going back to the failure um, point, Thomas Edison, he invented the light bulb and various other world-famous that inventions that have changed our life as we know it. And this is one of his quotes. I've not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And he was delighted. He was jumping up with joy at this quote. He still hadn't invented his product or the light bulb, but again, those 10,000 ways that didn't work taught him what would work later. And that's something that you really have to remember. If you want to be innovative, creative, whether you want to run a business, become a scientist, it doesn't matter. Take those risks, allow from failure, and learn from your mistakes. Don't repeat them, obviously. Don't repeat mistakes, but you learn from them. So lateral thinking, just to make sure you're all still awake, I'm going to give you a lateral thinking puzzle. This is just trying to get your mind to think differently from the normal way of thinking. So the rope ladder of a boat hangs over the side of a boat and just reaches the water. It has eight rungs five inches apart. How many rungs will be under the water when the tide rises four feet? If you could put up your hand, if you think, yeah? Pardon? Why not? Yeah, there you go. Well done. <laughs> Very well. Had you, had you heard it before? Oh, you've heard it before. I should have said, if you heard it before, don't answer. But Basically, um, that's exactly it. So guys, those of you that were trying to calculate it, I'm just trying to get you to open your minds into a different way of thinking. Don't think the normal way. Be creative, be curious, be innovative, and think of it a different way. I'm going to give you one more. If any of you have heard this one, please don't, um, please don't answer it. But OK. One day. Two mothers and two daughters are going shoe shopping. The trip was successful. Each bought a pair of shoes, and altogether they had three pairs. How is this possible? If you put up your hand, if you think you might know the answer. Yeah? No? <laughs> yeah? Wait. So it's only three people. One is a mother and a daughter. And yeah. she got the granny and the daughter. That's it. Exactly. Well done. <laughs> Round of applause. So did you hear it before? No. Exactly. So it doesn't matter, even if you did hear it, you're training your minds. Even if you have heard these, I'm trying to get you to think differently. So basically, it was a daughter, a mother, and a grandmother. That still counts as two mothers, two daughters. So I'm just trying to get you to think. That's all lateral thinking is. That all um, being creative, having an open mind, and not limiting yourself right at the beginning. And just don't think of the obvious, think of other ways as well. So now moving on to innovation. Again, a word used a lot at the moment. Um, for me, OK, to give you a simple definition of innovation, again, all the newspapers, the Irish government, I don't know if your teachers, everyone's using the word innovation. Let's be more innovative. To me, to, there's, there's hundreds of definitions of innovation that you'll find on the internet. But to me, it's a basic one. Innovation is using creativity to add value. So you're using your creativity, which is being inquisitive, being curious, opening your mind, problem solving, all of those things to add value 
i.e. you're doing something to either invent a product so someone has a better use of that product, you're inventing a car for the future, you're inventing a business that people want to use. It's all about the user um, and user-centered design. So that basically to me is what innovation is. You're using creativity but to add value, either if you own a company to bring more money in, if you're at school, you're using innovation to help yourself understand all the subjects and to, have, um, to do well in all of them. So you're trying new ideas, you're ensuring creativity is channeled into productive results. And one other tip I can give you right here is don't reinvent the wheel. Now I'll give you examples of that. If there's something out there in whatever you're doing, whether it's science, engineering, design, and you're trying to invent or innovate something, and someone else has already invented part of that product or the technology or something, there is no point you trying to do it yourself. Use what's already out there. And I'll give you an example here, the Apple iPod. Can you put your hands up if you own one? OK. So put your, leave your hands up if you think Apple invent that whole product. OK, so you're, you're absolutely right. They don't. Apple actually designed the casing. So they're, they're about designing the casing and the experience that the user has with that product. So what they're trying to do is when, when you use your iPod, you feel happy. You feel like it's doing what you want it to do. And there's minimal bugs in it. The technology inside an iPod is actually not done by Apple at all. They, they have, they've licensed the technology from loads of other small companies, scientists, engineers, technologists, computer scientists around the world that are already experts in their field, that know how the technology works, have written the program, have written the software, and they license it off them, and then case it themselves and put it into a product. So my point here is please don't reinvent the wheel. With me, I didn't reinvent the teapot. I kept the teapot, the vessel, and I reinvented to make it non-drip. Every small step, and you need to also collaborate. So if there are people that have done it around the world, go and use the knowledge that they have. There's no point in you doing it, them, uh, you doing it yourselves. And my last main point here about innovation is don't innovate for yourself. Don't invent for yourself. Innovate for the user. There is no point designing a product that you might enjoy unless everyone else wants to enjoy it too. And you find that with a lot of good, um, a lot of design, a lot of invention. You can see inventors that are caught up in their own product because they think it's the best thing, but then they go out and speak to people and they don't want it. So design. What is design? Again, these renderings of um, cars, futuristic cars. Design is the process that uses um, creativity and innovation. I'm going to go very briefly through the design process, what it is, but it's basically a tool. It's a methodology. It's something you can learn. It's a process from beginning to end that teaches you how to use your creativity and how to invent a new product, or how to use your creativity and start a new business, or whatever it is you're trying to do. It's just a process, and it's being used in so many different domains at the moment. It connects technology, science, and humanity, because it's about the user. All the products we're going to see, the next generation of products um, that you have at home, are all about the user. It's how you feel using them. And again, another example of this is um, the Nintendo Wii, where PlayStation and Sony PlayStation and Nintendo were both about to launch a new product. This is a few years ago. Nintendo went out and did their research and basically questioned everyone. Young mothers, grandmothers, um, young boys like you, anyone, and said, what do you want from a, a games console? What the Nintendo, um, the questions they got back were, oh, we want something interactive. We want something to lose weight. We want something that the whole family can join in together. Meanwhile, Sony went off and questioned existing Sony users and said, what do you want? And they said, oh, better graphics, better technology, better gaming. But they didn't actually go out to the whole market, to the whole user. And you all probably remember Nintendo, where well, you couldn't get your hands on one a couple of Christmases ago. There was a waiting list for everyone. You couldn't, you couldn't buy one for Christmas. And they actually dominated the market. 
and Sony's PlayStation did that, and Nintendo Wii sales, you had to queue at six in the morning when they got a delivery to get one. So, and then the other thing to remember is everything we've used in our daily lives has been designed. You're not wearing um, trainers or runners, as you call them here, at the moment because you're in your uniform. But in your runners, those air cell pockets, who do you think designs them? Scientists, engineers, technologists. The function, the, the runners that make you lose weight now or just give you comfort to your foot, that's all science. You may think that's fashion design, it's not. It's actual real, they're solving real problems and it's the human body so it's very important on what your shoes can do for you when you're running or you're in a sports field. So again, that's a perception. Scientists, technologists, engineers and designers do real exciting things every day. This geeky image that's associated with them has to disappear because there's a lot of um, good work going on. So the design process, just very briefly to run it, we've been through it anyway, to do your research, so you need to understand who it is you're designing for. Concept generation, where the creativity comes in and you get new ideas. And at this stage, the golden rule is no idea is a bad idea. So no matter how weird, wonderful, wacky, crazy, insane your idea might be at this stage, you keep it because later on it might answer another question. Then you develop. Again, be practical. You test and evaluate. Here you can see the, the Dyson um, vacuum cleaners being tested for hours on end on a piece of carpet backwards and forwards to see their life cycle. And then you prototype and you test again. And the main thing about the design process is, is at any stage, you can go back to the beginning. So if at the developing stage, I realize the product I'm designing doesn't work, you go back. You go back to the beginning and you start again, or you go back to the, another stage in it and you start again. You don't just carry on and at the end go, oh, well, this product doesn't quite work and it's not exactly what I wanted, but here it is. You keep going back and you keep changing it till you perfect it. So creativity and education. These are just some of my views on um, school systems, the education systems. And basically, I think we need to understand that we need to break down the barriers between s arts and sciences. Both are valid, both are important, and both go hand in hand, actually, especially in innovation and creativity. So remember, you can be good at art and science, or if you are more scientifically orientated, keep on your creative and artistic skills. And if you're more artistic, remember that science, maths, and engineering provides you with the knowledge to be able to be creative. So you really need to have um, cross-disciplinary um, thinking going on. Learning by doing. So these are some of my students um, at the product design degree. Learning by doing. We, we teach them something. I teach them something, then they do it. They put it into practice so they can understand why they're doing it. Problem solving rather than knowledge transmission. And here's the key word, I think, so far in this whole presentation, that everyone is creative. Everyone in this room is creative. Even if you come, came up to me and said, I cannot draw a stick man, I can't think outside the box, my mind's not open, believe it or not, you are creative. It's something you're born with. It's something that usually is either not fostered in school or it's not brought out but I can give you examples of creativity as well, both um, with a competition I set up last year and my product design students. And I'll give you examples of the reasons why everyone cr is creative, but believe me, you all are creative. So um, have any of you heard of Imaginate? Okay, a, cup a couple of you. Imaginate 2009 was a competition um, I launched last year, and basically it was to get students your age to start thinking about problem solving, about being more creative, about being innovative. And it was simple. Last year, we asked students to design an object for the classroom of the future. It was open to all secondary school children across Ireland, um, northern and southern Ireland. And I wanted you guys to go out and solve real problems you faced at schools. There were two categories. I just really briefly um, want to go through some of the submissions.
So you can see here, some of these students, they're all um, aged between 12 and 18, depending on which category. This is the junior category. Some of these students I met at the award ceremony apparently aren't creative, don't problem solve, don't have an open mind, so they think. And these are some of the ideas. So here you have a wonder bag, this bag that does everything. Makes popcorn, has an umbrella, has arms that come and massage your shoulders when your back hurts from carrying it, has a 3D hologram, a 3D hologram that tells you about all the latest things coming up, matches. And you can see this is from a student just spending, I think it was 45 minutes, problem solving. And her main issue was um, carrying her bag and why her bag ha didn't have more features, which was an issue across a lot of students, actually. Here's a couple more. I won't go into them in a lot of detail, but here you have no more books. A another problem for a lot of school children, they don't want to carry books. They're heavy. So the cybervisor basically transmits your teacher's notes onto the glasses. You can send your homework direct to the teacher's computer by pressing a button. And it has loads of other features. Again, just creativity, innovation. It doesn't matter, will it work, will it not work? It's ideas of problem solving for the future. This is a robot to replace the teacher at school. And it does everything from, I don't know, clean the floors as it walks, to gives you information. And it does everything and has, again, a hologram thing. This is a new seat that um, this student thought that every seat in school should be like this with a touch screen. And this pen you see here actually corrects your spelling. So if you write a word and it's the wrong spelling, it starts flashing red. Again, what a brilliant idea for school students being creative. This is now the senior category, um, the winner of the senior category. This student believed that every desk by the year 2025 in Ireland, every school desk across the country will look like this. His inspiration came from a palm tree, and it's completely ergonomic, a touchpad, and um, all your notes and work is on this desk. Again, no more school books, no more school bags, which seem to be a common theme among students. The slate does everything. Again, it manages your whole diary, your social life, your school life, completely um, electronic. This is actually the classroom. This student designed the classroom of the future. So it's got a solar panel roof. You can see the chairs going around. And then coming out, this is an enlargement of one of the chairs. They seem really comfortable for a school. It's like a lounger. You can sit back, recline. You've got your touch screen here. And you know, so um, again, a completely environmentally friendly classroom um, of the future. Again, just more ideas. And I'm just showing you this, hopefully to inspire you. These are students your age, um, brainstorming. So we had prizes and everything. The winning schools also got prizes. And it was um, webcast on RTE and shown on RTE Children's TV. So, and you can see here, sorry, we, we actually prototyped the winning ideas. So you can't really see it clearly. There's a cybervisor, and there's a Zen workstation because we have a rapid prototyper in Maynooth where you can basically draw something on the computer in SolidWorks, which I'm sure some of you are aware of, and then it prints it in plastic in 3D. So we actually gave that as a present to the students. So just to say there are ways of being creative, there are ways of being um, using your imagination. We're going to be launching it this January again. There's going to be a different theme where we're going to ask all the secondary school um, students around the country to problem solve another um, problem in their school. And if you want more details, obviously, they're available on the Imaginate website. So very quickly, just to end the presentation, and then I want to show you a vi video. I just really want to go and talk about product design at Maynooth, what we're trying to do, and other um, degrees across the country and in the UK. And